We back, people. It's round two. Round two of the motherfucking podcast titled Med Hero's Journey. We got a lot to talk about. It's, I mean, it, there's a lot we could talk about. There's a lot going on. Oh, shit. You see, I got the incense flowing. I kind of fuck with that. Um, What's been going on? Because, I mean, shit, I'll talk about what's been going on with me, you know? But what's been going on with you niggas? Kind of curious. Oh, we don't need that bad connection shit. Okay, we back. So the tape. So, this is great. Let's talk about music. So, I'm pausing off the tape. And not that I'm not doing it because the tape is done. The tape is done. Shit, mix and mastered is done. Here's the dilemma that we have in music and for artists that... I mean, this could go for any artist. This could go for artists on a label, artists not on a label, sign, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, do you drop a body of work and hope that people listen? See, the benefits of dropping a body of work to me, an EP, a mixtape, an album, to me is that, number one, now you have a selection of, of different vibes for people to listen to, see if they fuck with, right? The other benefit is promotional. You know what I'm saying? You could really lock in and just promote the project, the whole tape, and just constantly direct traffic to that tape for months or years. Where I'm at with it, which is the reason why I haven't dropped the tape, is because at this point, I'm like, maybe I should do singles. Maybe I should drop one song at a time here and there, give people different vibes, drop the songs with the videos, and try to build the shit. Because I'm building the shit from the basement, you know what I'm saying? Which most people are, you know what I mean? Like, you got to figure it's less than a 1% that are lit or have a fan base already. So it's like, I'm dropping one single at a time, Dropping shit with a video and um just give niggas give niggas something to focus on, something to see to work, and really try to get one thing to go. You know what I'm saying? And you could even look at somebody like Russ who, you know, dropped all the songs and shit, right? For all that time that he dropped them. And it's like, that was a dope move. I forgot what I was about to say, but that was a dope move that he did that. That he dropped one joint at a time and really built his shit up. And it he became popular for putting out music. He wasn't popular for making hot songs. Let's just be honest. like. You talk to niggas, you like, yo, you know a Russ song? Most people don't. You know what I'm saying? Now, the new shit that's on the radio, niggas know that shit. You know what I'm saying? I know that shit. I'm familiar with the one song where he's like, the in the video, he's like walking in the forest or something, in the woods or something. And I think that was on that project that like, then I started seeing him do all these interviews and they was trying to paint him as such a bad dude. Like, they was trying to paint Russ as if, like, he was some dickhead asshole, blah, blah, blah. Which, I mean, low-key, he kind of is, but I respect that shit because... I, let me rephrase. I expect it in... I respect it in some manner. Sometimes I feel like he has a little extra animosity in which I feel like is totally understandable being that how long this nigga been making music 
and I'm pretty much the same way. Like, I've been making music for a long time, and he's putting out all this music, and nothing's really happening. And then all of a sudden, he starts making money, and then he becomes famous. It's like, at that point, now I don't know, but I'm like, at that point, he probably looks at the whole industry and just being famous as a completely different thing because he was grinding it out so long. And not only that, but I'm sure Russ has done a lot of rapper shit before he was lit. For example, easiest one having money. But also the the other things like as far as getting invited to studios, getting paid for features, working with different producers, people reaching out to him to want to work, uh, going on tours, performing, selling out venues, little clubs, having fans, having a buzz, like all that shit. So, which is all dope for him. But long story short, um, yeah, so for me, me personally, and I honestly would... If anybody asked me that was like an up and coming artist, I would tell them too. Like, yeah, I do kind of feel like singles is the way to go. Um, And even if you don't have like a trap queen where it's like you got this one song, so you're just going to fucking push it for a whole. I think Fetty Wap was performing trap queen for like a year or something before it actually took off. Like. Even if you don't have a song that you're that confident in to push for that long, I think just single after single after single with videos and pictures and just, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Content. Content gets you your fans. Because, let's be for real, most people, when you listen to a project, you don't even like the whole shit. Any project that a nigga likes more than like two or three songs is damn near an instant classic. Like, we listen to shit, and I'm, really I'm speaking for me because I know how I am, but I've asked people like, yo, how did you feel about this person's project? How did you feel about this person's project? Blah, blah, blah. And the thing is, it's like people will be like, oh, it was dope. I thought it was cool. Da, da, da. Ask them, what, what's your favorite song? Niggas start uh uh the the one the one after I think it was the and it's like exactly so most of the time when you have fans and you're an artist what up Jay and you have fans and you're an artist it's like people fall in love more with your story and your grind and seeing all your moves and and being familiar and relating to you as like, oh, he's lit, but he's not that lit yet. And I feel like that's what really gives you fans. Like, niggas getting to experience you before you're lit, I feel like really helps to build that core fan base and just a fan base in general. Because once you lit, and I know I'm the same I'm the same way, but I kind of don't care. And I think a lot of people really don't care because it's like at the end of the day, you're going to fuck with who you fuck with. But people like going against the grain. Like people like liking something. Like when you get the aux, you want to put something on that's going to fuck niggas up that they haven't heard yet. That's just natural. Like we, we want to show off. And... If we can rest our hat on the fact that, you know, we found this artist or, you know, niggas ain't up on this yet, like, that really be the whole point of, like, riding with some shit is because I feel like you get a different level of satisfaction and pride in riding with some shit. And really, I think it just boils down to being right. You know what I mean? Like, if you're a fan of somebody... And they're not super lit. You're almost like you get to say, I told you so. You get to say, I told you so. If they ever pop, if they ever have something hot, if they if somebody ever brings their name up to you, you like in your head, you like, nigga, don't even talk to me about Wiz Khalifa because 
nigga, I was on that shit when X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? So I do think that that's a big part of building a fan base. And also, I think dropping consistent music, consistent content of different shit keeps people entertained. So translates to fans, people wanting to stay up to date on what you got going on, being involved and supporting. So for me, that's why I'm about to do the motherfucking singles game. Um, um, so I got one video that I'm shooting for sure um, in Atlanta next month. That's going to be dope. Um, the people I'm linking up with, Fire, um, shout out Alton Smash and Maestro. Um, so it's going to be a bunch of content like while I'm in Atlanta, probably studio sessions where I'll be um, producing for people and making songs. Um, hopefully get some fire features. And because uh, I look, listen, a lot of people don't really know what I do musically. I feel like like I feel like a lot of people who follow me are just kind of like watching or you niggas think I'm cute or some shit like that. Like, but people don't I feel like for the most part, people don't really value the music side of the shit I have going on and know what I do. But I'm going to let y'all in on something. I have a curse slash blessing when it comes to working with people, especially as an artist. I feel like as soon as I write some shit on the song, like as soon as I record on the song, whether it's my beat or not, and somebody else comes and records, majority of the time... It be the best shit. Like, even if I do a song and send it off to somebody, like, they will get on that shit and air me and air the song. And it is kind of funny to me because sometimes it'd be like, you know, I get in the studio, it's like, oh, you know, I, I gotta produce, I gotta, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta make money, I gotta. You know what I mean? I need to focus. I need to da da da. But at the end of the day, like, and and this is kind of like a more general topic that I'm about to get into. But at the end of the day, it kind of brings me to an idea of like, I almost feel like when people do something for so long, what up, Pepsi? When people do something for so long, it's like, it's like you develop a skill. It it be it's like a hobby, it's like a lifestyle, it's like something that you do all the time, right? And then when somebody just picks something up and like let's say they was doing something else and then they start doing something else, that person who's like jumping on ship to this thing, this new thing, majority of the time, even though they haven't put the years in, there's gonna be something about their attitude or their maybe even their outlook on it that like if they figure it out like if they spend the required time to like figure that skill out out of here you know what i'm saying and um i don't even know how i got to that topic but that's literally how i feel like i've been doing music for so long that like i have certain ways of looking at it kind of sometimes it can be kind of like jobby you know and i'll link with other people and they not to say that they literally doing it for fun because at the end of the day like it's still an investment so there's definitely like a level of like seriousness to it that's like not like oh i'm just gonna fuck around and like go to the studio and shit but um there's definitely a level of like i don't want to say joy either but like happiness, like, less concern, less pressure, less, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, responsibility to 
to live up to your own standard. You know what I'm saying? Because they're coming in like on some rookie shit, like passion shit, like just like fuck it, like I just want to do it, I want to try it, blah blah blah. Um, and I think that's a really good thing to have. I think that that is really dope, and I feel like for me, keeping that type of energy, I have to do other shit. Like I have to pick up other hobbies and jump into other people's like worlds to kind of get that reminder of like, sometimes I take music too serious. Like, and I look at it so strategically just based off all my experiences and shit where other people are just like, like Hempsey just said, loose and new. They're just like, I'm going to try it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, back to what I was saying, it's just like a lot of times when I, um, you know, when I work with people, they do their best shit. So I'm hoping when I go to Atlanta, some niggas can hop on some shit. We can make some hot shit. Niggas can make some money, you know, I, you know, it's so crazy because it's like when you look at people's Instagrams and shit and I know you know, people talk about how, like, Instagram's a front and blah, blah, blah. And, and like, it is. People are, are only posting, most people are only posting their best life, quote, unquote. But th- there's some there's some shit going on that niggas is into and they holding out. Like, I, I, I really believe it. Like, because... Niggas just be having bread, spending bread on shit, and not even, I mean, shit, I guess it's pocket watching. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you'll see some shit, and immediately you can't help but, like, put a price on it. You know what I mean? Like, anything that you see, like, where I'm at, like, you're looking at this background, trying, and you have a number in your head. Or value, and it might even just be a value placed in me now of what you see, like what you can judge. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely feel like niggas is out here getting to some undisclosed bags that I'm like, and then not even to say that I that I'm trying to jump on the wave, because it's like that <laughs> that is what it is. And it's not even that I'm trying to jump on um niggas waves or nothing, I just be curious. Like, I just be wanting to have conversations with people and I'm like, okay, what do you do? Oh, so like, how does that work? You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, who runs what? Who's the finesser? Like, what is the business actually about? Because it's like, at the end of the day, like, you know, I feel like we're obviously on this earth to live life and enjoy life. And a lot of that costs money, especially just in society. So I'm always just like, what are the easiest ways to make money? Like, what is the what is the easiest ways <clears throat> to just flip some shit? And you could come in at any point too. Like, you could be the investor to where you don't have a skill. Like, you just help the money. You could be the communicator. You could be the talent. You could be the skill, mechanic, whatever. Um, But it's like, at the end of the day, fuck all of that shit. Well, not fuck all of that shit, but it's like, I'd be interested, but at the end of the day, it's like, I just got to do what I feel like I need to do and I'm led to do and I know how to do in order to sustain what the fuck I got going on because I feel like you can get sidetracked like trying to look into other shit and be like oh what's that about what's this about blah 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 but um yeah man I uh in other news shit um I just got a motherfucking motorcycle and this shit is hard like there's a lot of components to it that I'm like, I feel like when you just see people riding a motorcycle, you really don't realize all the shit that they're actually doing. 
and like the shit that they're aware of. Like even starting this shit, like but I will say that it is uh it is like a huge adrenaline rush. And I and I guess that's like the risk, like how dangerous it is. Um because you feel that. Like when you're on it, you don't feel safe. And obviously I've been riding three days, so I'm not no fucking expert, but um, I still feel like even if you get to the point where you've been riding for years on a motorcycle, like you're still, you will still never be all the way comfortable. I don't think you can. It's just, this shit is wild. Like you're exposed as fuck. Um, you can't really see around you. You're no longer boxed in. So it's not like you're protected from anything. You can get hit by a car while you're riding a motorcycle. Um, and the wind's hitting you. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, I, I realized that when, um, I had a slingshot, my girl rented a slingshot for me. Like, when was this? This was like two or three years ago from my birthday. And we riding in the slingshot, like, did my fucking camera die? Man, I'm going to tell you like this. This shit is some bullshit. It's always some shit. When you try to fucking, when you trying to do something, well, hey, listen, I don't know how many of you people out there are. And I'm not trying to brag, but like me, where you just try shit. So I'm just like, I watch podcasts. Like, I'm just trying to do this shit. Like, boom, boom, boom. It ain't that hard. But then you come in a little fucking problems that it's like, you got to like look how to figure it out. Like, for example, I got this camera. Like, this, the Instagram video is for what I'm, I'm going to do picture in picture, where it's like, the main podcast is shot on a on like a goddamn HD camera type John. And the Instagram video, I just download and throw it within, you know, it's gonna be like another little box in the in the damn podcast, John. And um for some reason I can't have the camera running and recording and uh hooked up to the charger like it's talking about it's acting like it's connected to a computer when it's just plugged into the wall so i'm like now i gotta figure this shit out because these shits are gonna be long you know what i'm saying so i need that shit to record the whole time ain't ain't no breaks it can't it can't cut off it just gotta stay on so i'm gonna have to figure that out I don't know if I need a different wire or what. That shit is nutty. But, um, you know, on that note, man, it's another week. It's the second weekend. We grinding. I hope everybody else is grinding. And, you know, if you're not grinding, then, you know, I would say relax, man. Get your mind right. You know, get your energy right. But like my nigga Nip said, he said, get you some money, little nigga. You're going to feel a whole lot better. And um, that's one of the keys, man. Having bread really helps you, especially in society, to feel like niggas can't tell you nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because they can't hold nothing over you. You know, you don't you don't owe niggas nothing. You know what I'm saying? And if you do owe niggas something, at least you at a point where you got money to, you know, fend for yourself and ain't no ultimatum. Ain't no, you know, well, nigga, if I if I take this away or stop helping you, you fucked. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be in those situations. At least I know I don't. You know what I mean? And that'll help you. That'll help you push through and get the respect you feel like you deserve. Can't can't be out here taking shit from people. You know what I'm saying? It's it's quiet. It's quiet for all of that. You know what I'm saying? 2020 coronavirus 
shit could end at any point. Somebody could say something else happened and the world has changed forever again, you know. So you got to do what you got to do. And that's it.